Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to our channel and thanks for logging on. If you enjoy these videos, do me a favor and subscribe to our YouTube channel right here at Watchbox Reviews. I'd really appreciate it and then I'd be able to send videos and watches like this to your inbox as soon as tomorrow morning. And if you like this watch, you can buy it on thewatchbox.com. Buy, trade, and sell luxury watches 24 hours a day and globally on thewatchbox.com. This was one of the stars of Panerai's SIHH 2017 booth. The Panerai Luminor Submersible 1953 Days PAM 684 Red Gold 42 millimeters, and yes, a Luminor Submersible. This, along with the PAM 682, was the first ever 42 millimeter Luminor Submersible. You can see on my 16 centimeter circumference wrist, this is an easy watch to wear. Traditionally, Luminor subs have been the biggest and the burliest of the breed, but this is not a problem for my wrist. I would even say as small as 14 and a half centimeters circumference. Because of the cushion case fit of this one, it's basically 42 square. You should be able to wear it with security and style. Plus, I have to say that the heft of this one is so gratifying with a deep and massive case. You never forget you're wearing precious metal. Now in terms of thickness, it's not the worst case scenario you might imagine given the profile of that bezel. It's actually only 13.8 millimeters thick, meaning this will easily slide underneath a jacket cuff. Suit jackets, formal attire, business attire, no problem for this watch. Lug to lug, that's its largest dimension, but don't be deceived. It's 51.7 millimeters and that works just fine on a small wrist. Luminor fit is always different from a conventional watch, which is why I say, once more, down to about 14 and a half centimeters circumference, you're gonna wear this one comfortably. The other reason is that the lugs are so short, stubby, and downturned that they basically just drape the straps over the edge of your wrist rather than flaring out stridently. The look of them is natural on a smaller wrist. You can see that in Grand Panerai tradition, the Solid bars are held on by screws, not spring bars. This is the right way to make an expensive, heavy, and valuable sports watch. Fix those straps with screws and bars. And it also allows you to swap out easily using Panerai strap tools. The strap itself, at least as fitted, is a medium rectangular scale, matte black, alligator leather with a monotone stitch, a folded edge, and on the underside a very supple calfskin. The pin buckle is simple and easy to adjust. As you can see, all of satin finish. It makes for on-the-fly adjustments when your wrist may swell or contract a piece of cake. Of course, this is a Luminor 1950, so it has the more complex and somewhat sexier case profile associated with the true combat-era Panerai watches. The 1993 Civilian Betterini case was always a little bit of a tuna can. Starting in 2002, the phase-in of the 1950 case profile added much-needed elegance and versatility to the Luminor line. Now, you'll note all in high polish. This one's not bashful in spite of its 42 millimeter dimensions, and the bezel itself is remarkably striking. First, it has an incredible detent to it. It feels and sounds tremendous. The detent is so sharp and crisp that if you were to turn this thing in any proximity to a demilitarized zone, you could provoke a shooting war. That is the best bezel ratchet in the business. And like the PAM389, it has a ceramic cap, so you can't shatter the bezel, it's gold. But you also really can't scratch its top because of the ceramic cap. It will enjoy long wearing durability. Now you line that bezel up with the minute hand. This is a diver after all. And now you have an impromptu zero to 60 minute countdown timer that is, in my opinion, far more readable and practical than a chronograph. And remember, most chronograph minute gauges only go up to 30. This gives you 60, and it's far easier to read against a circular scale without any of the downstream maintenance costs of a true mechanical chronograph. Sunken sub, you can see that there's a small seconds indicator at 9 o'clock, and a relatively discreet date disc at 3 o'clock. Now we pop the crown guard open. Of course, you see the runner bearing inside the cam. This has been a feature of many Luminor models since it was introduced in 2007. It makes the action smoother, but it's just as robust as it's ever been. I should mention that the system is both a better crown guard in as much as it gives you far more coverage than a shouldered guard and a design icon because you can see this silhouette across a room and know exactly what it is. It has strong design DNA and it is a Panerai engineering triumph as it's solves the problem of how to resist wear 
wearing out the seals of a crown. When you have a highly water resistant watch and threading it in and out, in and out tends to wear down the seals. Well, instead of threading through them, simply compress them so they don't wear down. It also means that the crown is immediately unlocked for winding and for setting, note the time zone hour jump function, without having to thread out a tight screw down crown. So it's an easy system to use when your hands are wet, sweaty, or gloved. Now about that time zone system, you'll note that the constant seconds does not stop. So the watch keeps keeping good time even as you're jumping time zones while traveling. Now of course you pull the crown out all the way, you do hack the seconds and stop the system. But you'll note that in addition to hacking the time zone function, you also have the ability to drive the date forward and backwards as you cross the international date line. So this one has you set if you are a world wanderer. Turn it over and you can see something new and something old. Something relatively old as it's been around for the better part of a decade now is the Panerai Manufacturer Caliber 9000 family. What sets this one apart is that it is the 9010, which means it is thinner than the old 9000, and it features a full dual anchored balance bridge rather than a single sided balance cock, the result being more shock resistance. That doubles up the advantage already inherent in the free sprung index. Full balance bridge, free sprung balance, very shock resistant. Automatic winding, three day power reserve, and you can see the pivots of the twin mainspring barrels in series to ensure that the watch keeps a very consistent level of precision and isochronism throughout that three-day power reserve. Two mainspring barrels are better at keeping excellent isochronism throughout a power reserve than one large one. 31 joules, uh, you will see ceramic bearings at center for high winding efficiency, operating unlubricated. They also offer reduced maintenance requirements, beating away at 28,800 vibrations per hour. And keep, take note, this being a gold submersible, it's 100 meters water resistant, not the 300 of its steel counterpart. Nevertheless, are you really going to miss it? The watch is big, though not too big, butch, handsome, versatile, and remember, it's got the world's best diving bezel. You can see this one and throw it on your wrist on the watch box. And we are back with the PAM684. You can see though it's a 100 meter diver, Panerai does take the diving cause seriously with differential luminova employed for both the luminescent bezel pearl and the minute hand of the dial. Everything, including the crosshair of the sub-seconds and the constant seconds hand, luminescent and visible. You can see this one, beautiful, in red gold by the light of day on the watch box.